Brothers and sisters, welcome to the Liturgy of the Word. Today we celebrate the 10th week of Ordinary Times, Wednesday. And so together as the people of God, let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need, may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance, do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. Ahab called all Israel together and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah stepped out in front of all the people. How long, he said, do you mean to hobble first on one leg, then on the other? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. But the people never said a word. Elijah then said to them, I, I alone, am left as prophet of the Lord, while the prophets of Baal are four hundred and fifty. Let two bulls be given us. Let them choose one for themselves, dismember it, and lay it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I, in my turn, shall prepare the other bull, but not set fire to it. You must call on the name of your God, and I shall call on the name of mine. The God who answers with fire is God indeed. The people all answered, Agreed. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one bull and begin, for there are more of you. Call on the name of your God, but light no fire. They took the bull and prepared it, and from morning to midday they called on the name of Baal. O oh, Baal, answer us, they cried. But there was no voice, no answer, as they performed their hobbling dance round the altar they had made. Midday came, and Elijah mocked them. Call louder, he said, for he is a god. He is preoccupied, or he is busy, or he has gone on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep and will wake up. So they shouted louder and gashed themselves as their custom was, with swords and spears, until the blood flowed down them. Midday passed, and they ranted on until the time the offering is presented. But there was no voice, no answer, no attention given to them. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come closer to me. And all the people came closer to him. He repaired the altar of the Lord which had been broken down. Elijah took twelve stones corresponding to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come. Israel shall be your name, and built an altar in the name of the Lord. Round the altar he dug a trench of a size to hold two measures of seed. He then arranged the wood, dismembered the bull, and laid it on the wood. Then he said, Fill four jars with water, and pour it on the holocaust and on the wood. This they did. He said, Do it a second time. They did it a second time. He said, do it a third time. They did it a third time. The water flowed round the altar, and the trench itself was full of water. At the time when the offering is presented, Elijah the prophet stepped forward. O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, he said, let them know today that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, that I have done all these things at your command. 
answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, the Lord, are God and are winning back their hearts. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the holocaust and wood and licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell on their faces. The Lord is God, they cried. The Lord is God. The Word of the Lord Save me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Save me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Those who choose other gods increase their sorrows. Never will I offer their offerings of blood. Never will I take their name upon my lips. Save me, Lord, I take refuge in you. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. Save me, Lord, I take refuge in you. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Save me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Alleluia, alleluia. Make me grasp the way of your precepts and I will muse on your wonders. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not imagine that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to complete them. I tell you solemnly, till heaven and earth disappear, not one dot, not one little stroke, shall disappear from the law, until its purpose is achieved. Therefore the man who infringes even one of the least of these commandments, and teach others to do the same, will be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. But the man who keeps them and teaches them will be considered great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. The law and the prophets were seen as two pillars for Jewish spirituality. And the religious leaders in Jesus' time strictly adhered to the law and followed the letter of the law to a T. And this inevitably put heavy burdens on the shoulders of the ordinary Jews like sinners, tax collectors, the sick and downtrodden. The question, how could someone being burdened or encumbered by the law can ever experience the mercy and compassion of God? However, Jesus came to reveal the liberating power of the law and this caused tensions between Jesus and the religious leaders as they were threatened by the teaching and actions of Jesus. For Jesus, the law of love was primary and he responded to people and situations with love and compassion rather than legalism. Take the example of a teenager who has a 10 p.m. curfew imposed by the parents. This curfew imposed can be seen as oppressive if the teenager followed the letter of the law to the T. But when this teenage child realized the deep love and care of the parents towards him or her, then the law or curfew is no longer seen as an oppressive external enforcement, but an expression of genuine affection of the parents towards their child. This teenager then does not follow the letter of the law out of compulsion, but sees the spirit of the law as an inner freedom and joy. This again requires great patience and understanding, no doubt, especially on the part of the parents. 
not to be discouraged at first, but take every opportunity to affirm your love and care for your teenage child. The parable of the Good Samaritan points as to how we can become strict and rigid to the letter of the law. There was a half-dead man by the roadside, and we have the law-abiding priest and Levite who came across the almost lifeless person, but they chose to walk on the other side of the road and totally ignored him as they presumed that the person was dead, and to touch a corpse meant that they would become ritually unclean. However, we have the Good Samaritan who was moved with pity when he saw the person and reached out with great compassion and love towards a stranger who was beaten up badly and left to die on the roadside. Jesus ended the parable with this awkward and challenging question to his hearers, who is then a neighbor to the person left dying by the roadside? Just being good and pious Catholics is considered as minimalistic because our encounter of God following the spirit of the law has to have an impact on the lives of others in terms of our witness, actions, and convictions. We cannot therefore choose to remain like a spectator, a backbencher, or a fence-sitter in our Christian witnessing to others. Just like Moses, who came from the mountain with a radical appearance after his encounter with God, when his face became radiant with God's love and glory. My dear people, you and I have the potential to be radiant with the Lord's love and glory in our encounter with the risen Lord, especially at every Eucharistic celebration. As in the words of St. John Paul II, we can in fact get a glimpse of heaven appearing on earth. Just like Jesus, you and I need to go beyond the letter of the law and see the beauty of the person and bring the best out of that individual because you and I are just like little jigsaw puzzle that can be fit into God's masterpiece. Amen. We want to pray this wonderful prayer where Jesus invited us to have communion with his Father and also to call him as Abba. And so as his beloved children, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and your family members, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.